Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Arts and Culture Commission meeting. Today is Thursday, July 21st, 2016, and roll call, please. Commissioners Derhovanesian? Here. Commissioner Deaver? Here. Oshagan? Yes. Sahakian? And Chairperson Shirikian? Yes. Just to make a note, uh, Commissioner Sahakian is absent. The agenda for July 21st meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on July 15th, 2016. Item number two, consent items at 2A, approval of regular meeting minutes from June 16th, 2016. Any comments or any changes? Motion to approve. Second. And <laughs> any second? Second. Yes, I second. Sorry, I thought you seconded. No, I cannot. Who seconded? Uh, Ara second. Okay. <laughs> and the vote. Commissioners Derhovanesian? Yes. Beaver? Abstain. Oshagan? Yes. Commissioner Sahakian is absent. Chairperson Sharikian? Yes. Uh, item number three introductions and presentations. At 3A, Library Arts and Culture events presented by myself, Chuck Wyke. Briefly go over some of the uh, events that uh, you or the, the commission or the library is involved with. Of course, we're finishing up summer reading. Uh, it runs through August uh, for most of our uh, users, teens and adults, but children uh, will cut off at the end of July, uh, but there is a new online version of the program that we're, uh, we're working with the state of California on, and we're getting a lot of kids who are, who are uh, kind of joining both, so they collect points. It's not quite as interactive and, uh, as Pokemon, but it, it <laughs> seems to do the trick. So we'll keep going for another month. Uh, the Gravitas show at the Brand Library ends on August 5th. That's been a really, really interesting show. Five Los Angeles area artists um, and, and rather interesting sculptures and pieces of art. Uh, the Brand Associates are still looking for um, uh, submissions for their works on paper. Uh, that, that show will be at the Brand Library starting on September 24th. The Adams Square Mini Park gas station call for proposals closed yesterday, July 20th, um, and we will review those proposals uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, there are some 12 or 15, uh, which is the most we've ever had, uh, and they come from all over the place. Uh, Santa Barbara, uh, somebody actually emailed me from back east. He just finished his MFA in Boston. And he's driving across country, and he emailed the, uh, uh, his proposal. Tonight, at the Adult Recreation Center next to the Central Library, best-selling author Cynthia Sweeney will discuss her book, The Nest, at 7 p.m. Thursday, July 21. On top of that, Viet Nguyen uh, wrote a novel called The Sympathizer. He, he, uh, it was published this year in 2016. He won the Pulitzer Prize for novels uh, this year. And uh, he also won an Edgar Award, which is a mystery uh, writer's award. So he's coming in September. We're really happy to, to get him. That's September 29th. Um, we continue our... our uh, progress with the Central Library renovation. Uh, there are a number of uh, public numbers, websites, Twitter, Instagram, uh, social media. You can get a hold of us uh, if you want to know about that. Uh, our Central Library is open Monday through Thursday from 2.30 to 10 p.m. Unless you are a child or a parent with children, you can go up to our children's room at 10 o'clock. We're really busy over there, even, even with the renovation. Um, 
something you'll be interested in this Friday, that's tomorrow, the Mighty Cash Cats will present a tribute to the music of Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. Uh, the band leader just got back from a tour of Ireland, of all places. He played very large uh, halls over there. They're going to have him back again. Uh, so it's an internationally famous band. Uh, the Celtic Consort will be uh, at the end of the month, Friday, July 29th, at the Brand Library. Soul Sauce will bring their uh, Latin jazz music to Brand Library on beginning of August, August 5th. There's a world, kind of a world music jazz group, Quarteto Nuevo, on August 12th. Sangoma Beat, like loud music and lots of drums. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You can bring your kid and dance around. That's August 19th. And we will finish the Brand Library Plaza series this year with Melinda Hale, uh, singer-songwriter from Los Angeles. Uh, it's so far, it's been a very, very uh, positive experience, I think, for uh, the community. We have, I, I would, I'm estimating between 50 and 75 regulars. I see the same people every week. I saw them last year. Um, there's a nice core crowd. They know they're going to get a good show, and they show up for it. Uh, but on top of that, we may have up to another 100 people uh, who roll in out of the park, um, they may not even get to the plaza. They, some of them sit down in the parking lot or on the, the grass below and just listen to the music. It's amazing how well the sound carries up there. Uh, we've had people come out of the park when they're just hiking, yeah, heard the music, got to enjoy it. So uh, it's been a very successful series this year. We'll try and tweak it again next year and make it a little better. Uh, this year we uh, were able to install a portable stage that goes out every Friday uh, and it's made the experience much, much better for the uh, audiences. So that's our, our library report. Any questions? Okay, next item. Uh, item 3B, Jennifer McLean, Principal Economic Development Officer, Community Services, will discuss Glendale Tech Week. Well, good afternoon, Chairman Cherekian and Commissioners. I am happy to discuss Glendale Tech Week. Um, since I last brought this to your attention about a, a month or so ago, we've made significant progress. And I wanted to update you on where we are right now and highlight some potential opportunities for participation, which I know we'll get to later uh, in the uh, on the agenda as well. But. Um, just looking at the agenda and at the website itself, um, or at the program, so to date we have about 20 events lined up for Glendale Tech Week. Uh, this is going to take place from September 13th uh, through September 17th, and really the goal is to try to highlight innovation happening here in Glendale, really with the emphasis that we would highlight the companies that are here and an effort that would bring in more of these types of businesses and jobs here. Ultimately, these are good paying jobs. Uh, these are folks that we eventually want more and more of here in Glendale. So as we take a look at, uh, oops, maybe it's offline. How close do you have to be? There it goes. Mm. Too far away. From <laughs> Too far away. Yeah. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and um, go through some of the schedule here. If you want to move the microphone. Oh, there we go. It seems to be a finicky little uh, <laughs> mouse here. Oh, you click. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Okay. So this gets into some of the schedule for the week. So it's going to kick off on the 13th. We have Glendale Young Professionals that's going to host an event at Hollywood Production Center. It looks like we're going to have Steve Zern give an update on what some of the tech updates are from Glendale Water and Power. Um, Tuesday's actually been quite an open day as well. It was something initially that we thought, well, we'll see if there's any other activities on that day. Um, so that might be a very good day uh, to plug in any potential programming that we might have on the arts and technology side. On Friday, uh, excuse me, on Wednesday morning, we have uh, the the uh, job fair at the Verdugo's Job Center, and that will highlight uh, potential tech jobs that are within Glendale. 
Uh, we will really kick off festivities at the Alex Theater at 1030. That's where folks can, can start picking up their badges. And we have our first panel, uh, which is really our tech consultant that Economic Development hired, to go into the tech landscape within Glendale. What does it look like? Uh, how is there, what is the progress on the study so far? And really talk about how do we continue to build upon a tech ecosystem. Um, we will then go into a series of other panels, uh, we have Vincent Bradley, he's uh, out of the west side talking about crowdfunding. We have Jay Chang and Kevin Yamazaki, they'll be addressing tech for enterprise. Uh, one of these gentlemen works for USC, uh, Incubate USC, another one for Sidebench. Um, then at 4 o'clock, uh, we have an event at CBRE. Very happy to announce that Rick Caruso and Lewis Horn, who is the regional um, president for the Los Angeles region for CBRE, they'll be hosting a panel. And from 5 to 7, we'll be doing our kickoff party at CBRE. Later in the evening, we'll be going to Bourbon Steak uh, and be doing a little bit of uh, speed networking and meet the funders. We're hearing a lot of feedback from potential tech um, and startup folks that they want to have an opportunity to just meet one-on-one -on -one with some of these, uh, these funders and get some feedback. So that's what we're looking at programming. You'll see that there are some blank spots as well. Uh, we have a few programming uh, elements that are in the works. We're, we're looking at finalizing those. Uh, later in the day, we have a lunch and learn scheduled over at LegalZoom. Uh, then we have a panel and site tour at Yellow Pages. Um, and then we have a tech tenant unveil at JLL's um, building over at 450 North Brand. So I'm not even sure who this new tenant is, but I'm really looking forward to finding out who it is. Later in the evening, uh, we have a reception at the Museum of Neon Art and the Breezeway there. And uh, we just had uh, a meeting with the consul uh, with Dominican Republic. And they are actually going to be folded into the program as well. Uh, they have some tech elements um, that they're looking to focus here in Glendale um, and some interesting international ties and a rum bar as well. So uh, who can say no to that? Um, then later in the evening, we have a pitch fest. Uh, we are giving, uh, we have an open call to companies. They're going to have five minutes each to get up, make their pitch. It's not a competition, but just an opportunity to perfect their pitch, get in front of a crowd. Uh, so we still, we have five spaces left still um, for that opportunity. Um, then leading, leading into Friday, this day is really centered more on what we're seeing in tech within production, uh, animation, media. So we have a few other elements of programming we're, we're plugging in there, uh, but we have folks from Lucasfilms, Disney's going to have a panel. Uh, we have a, a, a solar system ambassador that's going to give a talk on the science of the Martian and how accurate that really was or was not. Um, and then eventually uh, a few other p panels and then we'll lead into um, a concert at the Alex Theater. Um, finally on Saturday, we're going to um, have a VIP lounge at the Open Arts and Music Festival, and we'll be working and seeing how we can collaborate with uh, the festival as well. And uh, just because we uh, believe in tech here, we are also promoting the Valley Economic Alliance's uh, hackathon. So this gives a, um, a preview of what's on tap here. And then this starts to get into some of the speakers. Uh, we're adding these speakers as they, as they come online, uh, but here's just a sampling of some of the folks. Somebody seems to know one of the speakers on That's there. my doctor, Dr. Manuel Momjian. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, then you should we come out for his talk. Don, Dr. Tenten. Uh, looks like Tenten was here. So we will continue to add to this. Uh, but as you can see, it's been a very exciting uh, program um, that we've been developing. And more and more folks continue to come forward once they learn about Tech Week. We just launched the ticket sales last week. It's $50 to go to all of the events, uh, $100 to go to the concert at the Alex Theater. We're announcing who that uh, the concert's going to, or the band is going to be next week. So with that said, I know I've taken up plenty of your time, but I'm very excited about Tech Week. Uh, and you can find out more just by going on the website at Glendale Tech Week. Dot com, and there's certainly opportunities to partner on this. I know that we were brainstorming before, and I look forward to, to figuring out exactly how we can partner. Well, thank you very much, for McLean. I want to ask if you guys have any questions. Uh, just one. Um, I would like to see for the commissioners, is there a special thing? Do we have to get the ticket, or we are uh, VIP invited today? As commissioners, this is an easy, easy answer. Yes, you are VIP. <laughs>
Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any thank other you. questions? Yeah, um, I want to thank you for coming and presenting to us and taking your time, like you said. Very, very happy to give it to you, and I think it's a great thing. A uh, couple of questions. So the Maryland Avenue thing, is that going to close off Maryland Avenue, that event that's going on? It is. I'm glad that you saw that. Yeah. And so what that is, that's um, we've been working alongside with economic development and um, coming up with a plan to partially close Maryland for a pilot program. So at this point uh, during Tech Week, Maryland will be will be partially closed. Essentially between the... Um, the whole week? Uh, not, all four days or...? Uh, it will be closed all four, well, yes, all four days. And in fact, we're looking at a, a pilot program that would close it for at least 30 days, possibly up to 90 days. Uh, but it would be from the parking uh, structure to the other parking structure? Yes, so it would be between Wilson and Broadway. Okay. Um, so within that, even within that street, a little bit more narrow between the entrance and exits of the parking garages. It's one of our challenges because that's really, a, it, it's really the only way in and out. So it's a small area, but uh, it's still about 2,500 square feet. And we believe just by closing that, it will help activate the street um, and get pedestrians out there and really an opportunity just to enjoy the space. It's an intimate, beautiful street and we're hoping to just slow traffic down and get people to enjoy it. Um, another question. So any response from, I mean, or have you started uh, getting the word out about Tech Week and anybody signing up already or what's What's the response? Yeah, so the response has been very good. Uh, we, as I said, the ticket sales were just launched last week, so we're starting to get some of the ticket sales in there. Uh, but then we also have sponsors that are coming forward. Each of the panelists uh, and the venues that are hosting, they're going to have uh, their employees join. At this point, we've hit an interesting um, I won't call it problem because it's a good problem to have, but the the programming is getting so full at this point that we really can't accommodate uh, that many more events. So we're, we're just trying to encourage folks that for this, I don't think that we need any more events, but what we really need is support. We need folks to come out and enjoy the activities, and hopefully that will be enough momentum so that next year we can accommodate all of the activities. But it's been a, a tremendous response so far, um, and any any support we can get um, from the commissioners or from the city to continue to get the word out, uh, it would be well received and much appreciated. Do you have any Facebook uh, events or announcements? That is a great point and something that we realized yesterday we don't have. Uh, so we will be working on creating that. Let yeah. us know so we can spread the word. I think this is the easiest way. To okay. Spread the Very word. good. Any other questions? And just one more comment. So let's definitely uh, keep coordinating because I think it would be great to have a presence. If, if Tuesday is the best day, it looks like Friday has some available space also mm -hmm. to do an arts and technology panel. Yeah, That's sure. I will bring that up in my report. I've oh, is that right? Okay. Interesting things to say. Like Excellent. That. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank you. Thank you for coming, Jennifer. The next item. At item 3C, Elin Isayan, Community Services Supervisor, Community Service and Parks, will talk about concerts in the park. Good afternoon, Chairman Sharikin and um, Commission. My name is Eileen Asayan with Community Services and Parks Department. I'm actually here to invite the Commission and also our community to our parks concert event we have every Wednesday, scheduled at North End of Verdugo Park from 6.30 to 8.30. We have two more um, concerts left for this summer. Um, the event is organized by uh, Community Services and Parks Department, but it is sponsored by um, Michael Antonovich's office, LA County Art Commission, and we do have some additional um, sponsors, Super King, Neptune Productions, LA Print House, Nature's Bakery, and Kona Ice. Uh, our next event is next uh, Wednesday, and we have the Swing Cats. The um, series ends August 3rd, so we would love for the community to be involved and to be out there. Thank you. Any questions? I'm very glad to see that, you know, we are offering this for the community and to see that different organizations and individuals have uh, sponsored and uh, shown their interest. That is great. We really want community to be part of whatever our 
city does. Thank you. We've had a great turnout in the last uh, four that we've had. I was and there a couple of weeks yes. ago, and uh, I saw the crowd. It's pretty good. Yeah, so it's been exciting. I was surprised to see that event. <laughs> I, I wasn't aware of it, but uh, I stopped by for about 15 minutes, but uh, it turned out a very nice place. Yeah, we've had a great turnout, and we hope to continue to have a great turnout. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, next item. At 3D, we have Velvet Roads. We'll talk about the Glendale International Film Festival, and she asked that we start off with a couple of Good videos. Good afternoon. We're going to show you a short video. was founded in 1887. It is known as the Jewel City. This documentary, Vintage Glorious Glendale, is about the Jewel City. We'll be visiting many of the libraries, schools, businesses, the beautiful old buildings, and most importantly, interviewing and talking to the great people of the Jewel City. The big thing doing the time that I was really very young was a matter of going down into the wash oh. and catching. It, it was not lined with concrete as it is now. And um, we caught pollywogs. Yep. When it was founded in 1893, the members uh, who founded the society realized that they needed to have uh, books and publications locally for them to grow the organization. So they started back then, of course, long before the internet and let alone the automobile, uh, of bringing out books uh, on, uh, on trains. And so by 1900, the collection was about 5,000 volumes. And then by the 1920s, grew so uh, large that we had to build our own building, which we did in 1926. So there's over 30,000 titles here. Uh, the library uh, was founded in 1893, and so over that hundred and some years, we've built quite a collection. Rode my bicycle over town, dropping into the Y, dropping out of the Y, coming to day camp, and uh, 
as I say, I was a kid in those days, right. and World War II was on. And Glendale was quite a hub for building of P-38 aircraft and training men to fly the P-38, which is quite a dangerous airplane. It had two fins that came back and mm. scary airplane. Mm. But all of this area below us, San Fernando Road, which is a big major street just back behind us, was all under camouflage. The last film is a sample of the films that we are going to be showing at this year's festival. Um, unfortunately, the end of the clip uh, for the first video didn't play completely. Um, but anyway, in 2013, I went to the Idlewild Film Festival. And I was fortunate enough to become a winner of that festival for my series, Room for Rent. The festival organizers took me under their wing and told me everything there is to know about creating a film festival. I was quite enchanted. So my first inspiration for the Glendale International Film Festival was back in 2013. In 2014, we actually put together the first year. The uh, organizers of the Idlewild Film Festival were very helpful in doing this. Unfortunately, the main organizer, Scott J. Faster, passed away from kidney cancer. So I dedicated the first 2014 film festival to Scott J. Foster for his inspiration. Last year, we dedicated the film festival to Cecil the Lion. And we had a beautiful tribute to the wildlife. This year, the film festival is dedicated to all creatures, great and small, in the animal kingdom, especially cats and dogs, and women filmmakers, women screenwriters, and the city of Glendale and its founder, Leslie. C brand. So we're going to have a great festival this year, and I do hope you can all attend. And uh, we'd like to spread the word throughout Glendale and let everyone know about it. We have nice little postcards, and we'd love to be on your calendar. Okay, sounds good. Uh, any questions? Any comments? It was a very nice presentation. Thank you for keeping community aware and coming and reminding them till the due date. Very good. Uh, it sounds very exciting. Yes. And you can get more information at the website, Glendale International Film Festival dot com. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item, Chuck. Item 4, oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not on this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The Commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The Commission may refer the matter to city staff for investigation and report. I have one card submitted okay. from Elisa Glickman. She's with the Glendale Arts, and she wants to uh, address the Commission concerning the Open Arts and Music Festival. The file I gave you is a PDF. Hi. Hi. Members of the commission, Mr. Chair, um, 
I'm so excited to be able to finally unveil our beautiful new logo and talk a little bit about the Open Arts and Music Festival. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late. We had our own board meeting earlier today. Um, so as you all know, because you are one of our funding partners on this event, the Open Arts and Music Festival is taking place in Central Park on September 17th from 12 to 10 p.m. Um, in downtown Glendale. And if you could actually turn to the next page for me, there you could see it. Um, um, we are excited, and once again, next page, sorry. Um, we are excited about the live music, the kids area, the arts market, the food trucks, the beer and the wine gardens, and the public art that will all be a part of this festival. Um, I can tell you that we are 70% to booking all of our artists and all of our arts vendors. Um, we are currently curating all of our food um, vendors. We have wine and beer partners, and um, we'll be able to to announce our kids zone participants as well quite soon. Um, actually, if you could go back just one quick second, uh, the one right after that, there we go. Um, so not only did we try really hard to integrate our own mission, Glendale Arts' mission into what this festival is about, we really are looking at and created the Open Arts and Music Festival because we want people to understand when they come into this community, we're open, we're welcoming, we are open to to new ideas, new people, new cultures, um, and a new understanding about what Glendale is and what Glendale is bound to become. And that is how it got its name. Um, here's just a little bit about some of our sponsors. As I mentioned, you all are, are key and significant partners in this event, but we're also proud to, in addition to the contributions that Glendale Arts has made, um, be working with the Downtown Glendale Association, the LA Arts and Culture Commission, Supervisor Antonovich's office, and then if we turn to our next slide, we can see some of our cor corporate po partners, oh, gosh, I can't even speak today, some of our corporate po partners that we have um, secured and, and are at this point allowed to make public. We have some other partners that we will be unveiling in the next couple of weeks, but certainly the fact that we are working with the Americana brand, CBRE, our friends at Street Food Cinema, who are going to help us promote the event, the Brew Yard, which is um, an active participant in our beer garden, um, ESM Productions, which is the production team that is um, working with us to secure the talent and develop the safety and the site plan for the event, and Studio Chew, which did all of the beautiful graphics that you see um, today. A little bit more about the festival. As we've talked about over the last couple of months, it has seen quite an evolution from what I originally presented. Um, gosh, it was so long ago, maybe three years ago was the plan we originally presented. Um, but in addition to the things that we originally envisioned, like the Kids Zone and, and all of that, we've really um, broadened the scope to be much more inclusive of all of the various components that make up Glendale and, and the downtown community. Um, here's just an example of some of our Facebook um, posts that we have started and our Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, please be sure to like us there. Um, and we will be making uh, entertainment announcements, vendor announcements, all of that on that. Uh, vehicle. We have Instagram, also a fun little, apparently the kids like it a lot, this Instagram. And so this is a fun way to reach out and to tap into our target demographic um, for this event. Um, our Twitter page. And then finally, our fabulous website. So this website, when you go on this website, I find it very distracting because you can actually move some of the letters around on the page. So I find myself on the telephone sometimes just, you know, creating my own art online. Um, it has a little music that's curated in the background, um, but it's also the perfect vehicle for us to not only announce the event, make announcements about our, some of our new partners, about, again, our artists and participants. We also have information about public transportation, parking, biking options, and some of the businesses that are around the area so that if you do want to venture out of the festival grounds at any point, there are plenty of opportunities for you to experience Glendale um, outside of Central Park. So I hope that you will visit one of our many pages, and I think we leave it here, um, with our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, and you can always go to openartsmusic.com, which is our website. Thank you very much. Thank any you. questions? 
Just looking forward to it. So am I. I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be a busy weekend. It's a week. very busy weekend, and we're really excited to be a part of um, sort of the end period to Tech Week, Tech which week, is also yes. going to be phenomenal. So um, it's a great opportunity for us to really put Glendale in its totality and light for people who have never been here, wouldn't think of coming here, or have come here a lot but don't really know all the hidden gems that are in this community. So we're very excited to be a part of all of these. Um, yes, sorry I missed the board meeting today. Well, you had something I, else going I, on I was, I was at a funeral. Oh, I'm <laughs> so, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much for coming and presentation. Could you talk a little bit about the public art aspect of it, which I think really interests the commission. Sure. And I know there is that evening thing uh, that's going on. Was there were talk about having something during the day, public art installation of some sort? It's actually still in the process of being curated. So um, the original concept that we had for the public art presentation was a little bit outside of our budgetary um, uh, wherewithal this year. So we actually have tabled the large scope project for next year and are currently seeking funding um, to fund it in its entirety. We had talked about doing it in pieces, but really it's something that you have to experience in its entirety. Um, so there will be, and, and again, as a part of our arts market vendor component, it's actually a juried process. And so we've asked our arts vendors to, as they submit um, their, their concept and their design for their own market space to also incorporate um, an interactive component so that not only are you experiencing the finished product, but you get to watch these artists as their work unfolds. So for us, we think that that's a very purposeful day-long activity um, that can be experienced both by the, the kids that are participating, their families, and then certainly go into the evening. There is another public art component that we are working on and still hope to and plan to project off of the Masonic Temple, and CBRE has been very generous with us in terms of what we're able to do with them. Um, I will not be able to unveil the details about that for another couple of weeks, um, but it is moving forward, and it's very it's it's equally as exciting. It's just a little less expensive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as we talked about early on, um, one of the things that we were very purposeful about was coming up with a grand vision, and then as funding revealed itself, really looking at that grand vision and figuring out what we could tackle appropriately in the first year, and what are some of the things things that we knew we wanted to continue to pursue for subsequent years. And unfortunately, this fell into the subsequent year category. Um, but it gives us an opportunity to focus on some of the areas that are really important to the event, which are the musicians, um, a, a strong base for the artist market, and then the vendors themselves. So um, I'll keep you posted as more details come about. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? I just want to say I think it's exciting the way that it's evolving and Thank congratulations you. on all of the support and everything pulling together. We have a great team and Jess Castile has done a phenomenal job. So I appreciate all of this commission's ongoing support and hopefully you have an August meeting, correct? Hopefully by your August meeting I'll be able to um, make a much larger presentation and, and be able to unveil some of these things that I'm keeping hidden in my back pocket that I know you really want to know about. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. Thank you for coming. waiting. Exciting. Thank you for coming. <laughs> oh, and there's flyers here. All right, next item, please. Item 5, business agenda. At A, action items. At A1, Arts and Culture Commission project updates. At A1, sub A, work plan elements and status. And at a1 sub B, motion approving a new allocation of $8,000 from temporary art in public spaces for Tech Week art events and cultural programming for the Maryland Street closure. Good afternoon, Commissioners Chair Shrikian and Commissioners. I'm Sharon Mangarrett, your Principal Administrator for Arts and Culture for the City of Glendale. Um, I'm going to uh, make a presentation now about the status of your work plan elements and also introduce a motion for a new allocation from an existing budget. First of all, um, in November 2015, the City Council approved your 2015-2017 work plan 
unappropriated $380,000 towards that plan. This is how that budget shakes out. Um, you've seen this slide before, basically outlining all the programs that we're involved in right now. And I'll just go through them. The first one that you just heard about is the Glendale Open Arts and Music Festival. It's scheduled for September the 17th. It's probably the one that you've been hearing about for the longest. And it's coming together really nicely, thanks to uh, Ms. Elisa Gleekman, who is uh, overseeing that effort and really getting involved, getting the whole community involved in it. It's going to be the culminating event of our Tech Week, and we're really excited about um, that, you know, ending our Tech Week with a big bang. Next event is the Open Studios Tour for this fall. Uh, we now have a date of October 15th and 16th. 1111 uh, Creative Collective is our consultant that's handling that for us. They're busy with another event today, so they couldn't be here, but they did submit to us their timeline, which looks really good, um, and I'm really excited about working with them. Uh, since we contracted with them, we've been exposed to many other events and projects that they've been working on, and they're all very, very good. Uh, we're, we're really um, glad that we selected this consultant. So the uh, Open Studios Tour will be October 15th and 16th. Currently, we're working on the branding elements, the logos, et cetera. Those things will be finalized probably tomorrow. Um, I saw some drafts today and sent them back for some minor changes. Once we do have the final logos, I'll be sending them to Commissioners Dorhovnesian and Deaver for their approval. But I think they'll be very happy with what they see. Next project is Beyond the Box, our mural box program, which is uh, in its third year, Chuck. Um, our next wave of mural boxes will be done um, the 14th through the 16th to coincide with our Open Studios Tour. So the mural box installations will be a stop on our Open Studios Tour. Um, the mural boxes that we've selected for this time will be along South Glendale Avenue and Colorado Boulevard to very highly dense urban areas. So we hope to create a lot of hoopla with that density. Um, Commissioner Oshigan had suggested that we consider giving the artists more time, and we uh, talked to a lot of our peers about that, and we came up with a solution to uh, do an enhancement by pre-priming the boxes and getting the boxes ready for the artists. So they'll have less to do when they get there. So they'll still have the same amount of time to install their art, but they won't have to do any prep or any of the sanding or any of that stuff. So that kind of takes maybe eight to 10 hours worth of work away from them. So we kind of approach that a different way. Uh, What's the location so again? They'll be along Glendale Avenue uh, between, Chuck. Uh, uh, commissioners between Harvard all the way down to San Fernando. And then on Colorado, um, between San Fernando on the west uh, and all the way back east to about Glendale, because San Fernando curves around at the bottom of the city. And as you know, that area has lots and lots of businesses. So as we're notifying the businesses of this activity, we'll give them opportunities to participate. Um, perhaps they can take advantage of the crowds that will be coming by to see the mural boxes or gathering to, to see the installations with some special offers or, or entertainment themselves. Um, excuse me, Sharon, who's going to do the prepping? Is that going to add to the budget, or there will be a cost? Um, we believe it's nominal, somewhere between six hundred dollars and a thousand dollars. We'd like to invite um, GYA to help us do that. Um, our youth folks, our at-risk youth, that we use for a lot of our library projects. So basically, they'd be going to each box, sanding it down, and putting the primer on uh -huh. at some date prior to the installation. Um, yeah, okay, that's, that's a really good idea. Also, we had mentioned maybe an idea of having a meeting of all the, all the new artists with the older artists uh, before the day, such that they, they get a little bit of prep on what, they're, what they expect and how things go. Is that, you think that's going to be possible to um, pull off? I believe, yeah, we can definitely pull that off. Um, we can also reach out to them one-on-one. -on -one. It's not that many people. So, you know, just to, to spend more time with each artist before they go out, I think it's, is the most important thing to do. Uh, we've had pre-installation meetings in the past that weren't really well attended because mm. we characterized them as optional. But with so few people to really talk to, I think between myself, Chuck, and other staff, we can reach each person one-on-one -on -one and have a really good discussion with them before they go out. Now, about how many utility boxes are we talking about? 
14 to 16 boxes total. Yeah, and, and you know, depending on how we plan it, invariably one of them isn't available or something gets knocked down or, you know, we may have to add one because something's vandalized that's been painted before. So we're just saying between 10 and 15. So that's, that's we've proven that that's a good manageable amount for us. And we'll be enlisting all the support of you all again to um, come out and uh, help uh, talk to the artists, take pictures, Instagram, all that stuff to make it a really great event. Snapchat. But hopefully we'll be having you circulating throughout Open Studios Tour as well, so that'll be just one stop in your day. <coughs> all right. Moving right along, uh, our Plaza series, which uh, Chuck already talked about, is underway. Um, we had 70 submissions this year. We selected 13 perform performance artists, and we've had a really wonderful turnout and really great art with that, that series. So we're just really happy with how that's going. And perhaps one of the most important uh, projects that we're working on this year is the Public Art Master Plan. Um, we. We reviewed several proposals from consultants that were recruited nationwide. Um, because of the level of expertise and the specific experience that we asked for, we only got four proposals. But we did check in with some other cities, and that's about average. Um, Pasadena got three. Some other cities got four or five. But the amount of response that we got was actually to be expected. Um, staff and Commissioner Shariki and, and Sahakian interviewed the two highest rated proposers. And we're now recommending that we move forward with the negotiation with Cars and Barbara Goldstein and Associates. One thing I wanted to point out is that although we only got four proposals, the one proposal that we got from Cars and Barbara Goldstein I think is probably the highest, best proposal we could have gotten from anybody on the West Coast. Um, Ms. Goldstein has really distinguished herself in public art. She's a Stanford Fellow. She was uh, recently recognized by Americans for the Arts, which is the largest and most important arts organization uh, in the U.S. So having her on their team, for me, creates an, an ace in the hole. And then with CARS, uh, they have a, a long uh, reputation, high reputation for community engagement, public projects, including Ciclavia and others. And so we just are really excited about this team coming to work for us. So we'd like to move ahead with negotiating their fee and taking this to the city council, hopefully on the 9th of August. Question? Um, one of the things I, I recall when we talked about it as a full body was that the Barbara Goldstein's um, role in the overall proposal was was fairly small compared to the cars just budgetarily. Um, and so how, how did that come out in the in the interviews, or what more did you learn about that? We had a lot of conversation about that because of the two proposers that we were looking at, they both proposed something. The actual proposal was, was far higher than the $50,000 that we had budgeted. So we talked about um, what specific things we really needed. And um, we came to the conclusion that we had not budgeted enough. And that in order to get the right amount of participation from, from all the participants, especially from Barbara Goldstein, we'd have to allocate more money. So that's why we're currently in the process of, of negotiating the actual fee based on what, what we're going to need. So just, so just to clarify, so are we negotiating potentially a, giving a higher fee to get the full scope, or are we talking about kind of deciding what's most important within that scope? The former, a higher fee to get a larger scope. Um, <clears throat> there are some things that they proposed um, that we frankly don't need because we have those from other projects, other um, community engagement projects where we've gathered information from our communities. So there, there's some information that, that, you know, that we're kind of ahead of the curve on as a city. Um, but so uh, so in, in terms of, of gathering information specific to the plan that would inform the plan? Yes. So that's something that might be, be cut? No, no, so? increased. Okay. Oh, okay. Increased. So However, more participation. The, both of the proposers proposed a level that's higher than we feel that we need. However, it's we still feel we need more than we have budgeted for. So we're negotiating somewhere in the middle of that so that we get the right amount of community engagement. Um, and I know that there's a committee actively involved in, in all of that. Will that come back to the commission for us to have a bit before it goes to council so as a body we have a better understanding or clear understanding of what the final 
thing will look like. I mean, some of us are, are pretty invested in this. This is a huge, huge piece for the future of Glendale and what we are putting forth in terms of policy, in terms of opportunities for long-term art. And I, I just want to make sh sure that I understand, and I'm sure other commissioners feel the same way, exactly what it is that we will be getting and what we're paying for that. Sure. We can certainly bring uh, Cars Goldstein back to this commission at your next meeting and have them present to you. Um, actually, I need to go on the same thing. We discussed that in our meeting that uh, two of our commissioners are going to sit in that committee, but it's going to come to the commission at large, so we will all be exposed to exactly what needs to be done. I agree with you. That was even That's shared fine. and discussed. We can absolutely do that. Just so to remind. We can have so them come good. to your August meeting and present to you. Since it's a major yeah. thing. It's August. absolutely major. Yeah, that was my understanding also that we would interview, we would get a chance to interview the, the person that was chosen by, this, by the committee. Um, I would like to get a, like a brief, you know, what did they present to you? Um, you were on the commission, right? And, and you know, what was the, con the pros and cons? I'd just like to get like a few minutes brief of exactly what happened in that meeting and why you said it's a better proposal, but in what ways is it better than the, the other one? I'd like to get just a brief on that. We'll be happy to do that. We can bring them back to your next meeting and um, have them fully uh, present to you. Also, we, I can, oh, as staff, present to you our scoring and what our criteria was against the RFP and against the other firm. We can put it on the agenda. So should Absolutely. we request that or how do we do it? We're that definitely probably gonna put it on, we want to see that. I'm, at, not, at I'm not requesting that they both come to our meeting, um, Sharon. Um, Yes, I, we will bring them back for a public meeting. Can I clarify? I mean, I think we all agree that we want to hear the, uh, the interview, the, the, the one that was chosen. But I'd just like to get a report from you uh, about what happened at that meeting and, and why. I don't need the numbers. I just need, like, just to Correct. tell me. Sure. Tell us what happened and, and why you chose. Yeah, and, and, and to add to that, because I, I do recall that when the RFP went out, it was very broad. I think internally there was a lot of commissioners and staff all had very strong opinions about what we are expecting and kind of looking to the consultants to help us define that a little bit because we all came with different levels of expertise and, and ex expectation. So having a full understanding of what came through in, in that in the in the meeting and and then also what we are signing off on before it goes to, to council. Well, I'll have to beg for your forgiveness and my <laughs> eagerness to get this rolling. Um, I, I uh, was suggesting that we we move ahead, but we can wait and um, go ahead and bring them back uh, for your next meeting and and really pour through this as as you're suggesting. That's absolutely fine. Bring sorry, we bring them who back? I don't understand. We're getting back so we can report to you the interviews and the status of the interview, uh, not the process of choosing them yet. That's what or the negotiation part of it. We will report next meeting the interview part of it. Is that correct? And, that, and yes. that's what I understand. Um, uh, Members of the Commission, Lucy Varpedian with the City Attorney's Office, but I understand that to be the case. I think you're looking for the specific scope of work as was negotiated by the, um, by the subcommittee. And I think you're looking for just a report on that, not necessarily to bring the um, actual vendor, the consultant, back. We're, wow. Well, are we we're looking, consultant I'm interested, we're, uh, I'm interested in, in a report on what happened in that meeting and why this one vendor was chosen, and I'm also interested in talking to the vendor in this in this. I, I only here. caution yeah. you that the contract has not yet been finalized, so the negotiations have not yet been finalized. If you um, have the benefit of that discussion in an open session, which it will have to be at an open session, and if the, the negotiations fall through, then um, any competitor would have had the benefit of the negotiating process. Um, while you may think that that's not a, a, a big deal, it could potentially impact how you negotiate the contract with the runner-up. So I think as it relates to the actual scope of work, what it was that, that they were discussing, um, that I think we can certainly bring back for your consideration. Um, 
And then the, but you want to actually meet with the consultant as well at this in this context. Um, before I mean, before we sign off on the biggest thing that's happened to Glendale Arts in I don't know as long as I've been in Glendale, I'd like to speak with them. Yes. One moment, please. <laughs> Well, the decision is yours. Um, I think our council has duly informed us of the risks of having the uh, consultant come in and present to you before having uh, nailed the contract. Um, just in summary that you've basically tipped your hand if you decide not to go with this consultant and you've created an expectation if you do go with a different consultant, that, it, which they would be privy to. Is the concern about the dollar amount associated or about the scope of work associated? It, it would be both and just generally the, the overall negotiation of the contract. If, you're, um, if, the, if it's nuanced, there are specific things that you're trying to negotiate in having a primary consultant uh, be more actively involved or the engagement. Um, I think that would be the part where, you know, that's why a lot of times negotiations are not done in a public setting. Um, so perhaps you could do it in a two-step process. Um, maybe what you would do is review the, the scope of work, and if you find that you're satisfied with what's being proposed and feel that the, the, commi the committee that was set up to do the, do the negotiations, do the interviews, maybe that's where you leave that, but maybe um, after you finalize the contract, but before it goes to council, you can bring the um, consultants back and have an opportunity to meet with them um, for a final, final say. Because it's ultimately the council's approval. If at that point um, you disagree, then, um, then, then it would not go to, it, you'd have a, essentially a split vote with the commission where you've got the committee that's recommending it and the balance of the commissioners who weren't present not recommending it. So that's not the ideal situation, but at least the full commission has an opportunity to voice their comments before it goes to council. So and, do and I understand it right? So there are two steps. First step, we'll have the scope and exactly the details of why, what was discussed, what is expected. The second would be, uh, the second level of approval would be to see the uh, individual and to have a chance to talk to them and to see how it comes along? Is that how, what you're it, proposing? If, if you want to. I think if you're satisfied at the end of the first um, session, when you hear the scope of work and you hear the um, context of the, the discussions, the interviews, and, and the, the negotiation broadly, then you can choose to forego the second step. But if you still feel at that point that it's necessary before you finalize negotiations to still meet with them, then I think you could look at it at that point and make a determination. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a risk, but you can choose to take it. I definitely, personally, I definitely would like to have both steps, and I would like to have the scope, and I would like to have the chance to interview the person as well. This is the whole, I mean, the scaffolding, the whole base of the Art and Culture Commission is its work plan. And it is very important that we are all, we cannot all be at the committee but we need to have the approval of all of us on the dais on this issue. So I, I would propose that we would do both. And I'd like to add that um, in terms of mitigating whatever risk by taking the two steps, you know, my strong belief is that if we decide not to go with Carlos Goldstein, that we need to go back out again, that we um, would not have a second runner-up that's capable of doing the plan. So, so I think that does mitigate our risk right there. It's not as if the second runner-up is going to, you know, be able to come in and, and utilize any information. I, I don't believe we would select the second one. Personally, that will be, I want to add a few comments here. It's not a report about the, uh, uh, the interviews, but the process that we went through the <coughs> interviews and the points that were set and the questions were asked, the same questions were asked to both uh, firms, and the result, based on that result, was chosen the A group. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's what I felt when I was in that interview that this commission appointed me and Sahak, uh, I mean uh, Sahakian, Commissioner Sahakian, to do this job. If they're going to come and report here again, then we're doing the same job twice. That's, that's my understanding. But can I say something? Uh, when may. we were talking about this and we wanted <coughs> you to appoint another person, you as the chair, chair to be in that committee, was discuss that. We, we want you to go through the preliminary step of the choosing of the two, the finals, and then definitely it was adamantly discussed that we would like to have the commission to have as a whole the chance to see the, um, what is being finalized. So there are two basically. things. There's two different things here. One A is now we the committee, the subcommittee will have the recommendation. Yes. A firm and the A firm will come here and do the presentation as what the scope of the plan is, not the the the, the contract part of it. Now, if we need to add or remove things out of it, that will probably be the commission job. But to see that, no, we don't want this firm, that will bring to your point where we need to start all over again. And that's my understanding. It will not go to second option. Okay, we have a second, no, runner up. No, it, I, I don't think it will be correct to go there. Um, so therefore, fine, we will bring them up and we will ask them to do presentation and we will add our uh, uh, points during the interview, whatever we came up the points. Uh, but if we do disagree, then we need to go back to uh, point zero and start again. That's my understanding. If I'm wrong, then please uh, correct me. I think we yeah. agreed. Yeah, I think staff agrees with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then if everything is, are you guys okay with it? I just, I just want to hear. I just want to hear articulated again to make sure we're all on the same page, um, because we probably have slightly nuanced opinions about what it is that's important in this process. So, can I hear back from staff what sure. what it is that we're doing? Okay, um, primarily that we would a bring back our whole selection process, really talk about what the RFP said, how we. Uh, arrived at the selection, all the criteria that we used to evaluate the candidates and what the outcome of the interviews were, you know, not in specific numerical detail, but in summary. The second uh, part of that would be to bring the selected consultant or the recommended consultant in so that they may um, present their qualifications and answer any questions. Basically the plan that they're going to follow. Yeah, and so Can that not I'm, I'm not in... I don't think we're interested. I think I'm okay with uh, the negotiations, the financial negotiations being done without me being involved. I, I'm really interested in the scope of the work. And so before the negotiations begin, it's, it's very important that they come here and, and they, they get the scope of the work that they need to do from us as a whole, as a whole That's body, a yeah. right? And then you guys go negotiate in a dark room someplace. I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have lots of light in the room. <laughs> Okay. You know, I like the wording that not the selected group, but the recommended group. So the recommended group comes here and gets the final selection approval here from the commission. And they're very clear that they're Before recommended and the not council. selected. They're very yeah, clear. Yeah, they're very, they're clear, very clear, yes. Right. So I think, yeah, that's very important. And they're yeah. also, uh, if I may add, even we recommend that, and if it goes to the commission, I mean the council, the council, the council may not uh, choose that. So yeah. they are aware of that. Yeah. Yes. And certainly what we've described here today could be done in a single meeting. We don't need to do that in a two-step process. I think so. Surely, yeah. Well, I think that, that we should do it in a single meeting because our next meeting is August. Our next meeting after that is September, and that's during Tech Week. So we probably want to be out doing Tech Week stuff on that meeting. Can we, can we have a special meeting for this? You can. And could it be somewhere before September 12th? <laughs> <laughs> but you, certainly you can select a date that's convenient for more. Because yeah, I need to leave the country. So well, that he, and we want to be definitely meeting. here while this is. August. So August, the second meeting would be perfect. We'll just accomplish both activities within that meeting. Try to keep the agenda light on other things. Sounds and um, really focus the next meeting on Even that if thing. it's a short meeting, but we want that specific part to, to be the highlight uh, of the agenda. So in advance of that meeting or as part of that packet, we will receive uh, with ample time to review the scope of 
work, what we've agreed that they will be doing. And then their presentation really is just to add to that comfort, uh, correct? That would be in my report to you. Um, I would do a full report to you, including everything that we just talked okay. about. Mm -hmm. And ample time uh, for me would probably be a week <laughs> before, if, if that's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I mean, yeah. uh, no, I think that's a good deal. I kind of like the two step. I like the two different meetings personally, just because I, I, if I, if I personally saw the scope of work and thought, okay, this is in in keeping with what what the intention was or what I I, I feel and other commissioners feel, I have less concern about their qualifications because we all read the proposals. You know, Gold, Barbara Goldstein is immensely qualified. The other group has done a lot of interesting things. It depends on how they pull that together. That's what I want to see either in writing or through their through through their presentation is understanding how they're going to work together, but it's really the scope of work and the outcome and the metrics and all of that that I'm particularly interested in. So for me, it could be in two different meetings if that, I wouldn't even have to actually have the interview with them, frankly, if I felt comfortable with what I was seeing. But that's just me, and I'm not hearing that from my other commissioners. But um, So I'm fine with whatever, well, wh whichever process. If you want to condense it, can we have it kind of, um, the information sent to us, as you said, to have ample time to read it on our own? And then when we come to the commission, we are already prepped into what is there and what needs to be there. So uh, if we want to cut it into one meeting instead of two steps, would that work for you? I'm just I trying wanna, to keep it from I being surprises, I guess. You know, if we come to a meeting and we come and go, oh, my gosh, these are things that we didn't agree with, and here they're standing here, and they go, oh, well, that's not what we heard in our committee. So I, I think that's why I think having two different meetings just avoids some it might extend us by a, an extra month, but in order to do the process in a meaningful way, I think time is... is That's fine. I think... May I, I, may I add something here? Um, during the interview, what the firms presented were based on the package that we had. So there was nothing added or different from the package what we received, all of us. Uh, if you do have questions, I think within that package, that will be... a good place to start, because they did not present something different from the packages, not A. Two, the list of questions that we had uh, during the interview where Sharon prepared, we can probably share that t with you guys, which is, I don't think it will be an issue. Um, then that will give you also a prep so you know where and what kind of questions we ask them and what kind of answers we got from them. And that will give you an idea how we narrow it down to one specific uh, consultant firm. Um, I think, Sharon, we can, they can, we can, you can share all those information. Almost immediately. And uh, if you guys, I think in one session, we should be able to finish and have a, a recommendation. I don't see more than one. Now, if we disagree with that one firm, then we're going to start all over again, oh. which... Can I say something? Yes. Uh, since we have August, and in a way I can see Commissioner Deaver's point of view that if we need to rehash anything, yeah, we have seen it, but there are issues that we might l like to look at the, well, the scope and all that. Um, so we could have our regular uh, commission meeting in August and then a special meeting for meeting with the consultant. If, if needed. Right? Or both, no? both, in, oh, August. both uh, in August. So that way, it could be the other one. It would be a special meeting. It could be a short meeting, you know, anything. That thing that we would kind of, in a way, if anything needs to be discussed, then you do not want that exposure in front of uh, the consultant. So I want to ask Lucy if that's if can do that. doable and it would, within the frame of the work that we're working, is that something... Certainly, if you want to call for a special meeting, you can you can do that. Um, that's not that's not a problem. I think what you're looking to do, if if I can um, maybe restate it, is that you'd like to in in the first meeting have an understanding of the scope of work, have a conversation about that, uh, receive the scope of work in advance, have an opportunity to study it, then have the opportunity to discuss it amongst yourselves at a meeting, and then at a later time bring back the. Um, consultants so that you may direct questions to them and have them answer questions. I think that's what you're looking for. Um, yeah, you could certainly do that. That's not a problem. My only concern is, is that our, our subsequent meeting after August occurs during Tech Week. And, you know, we wouldn't be able to participate fully in Tech Week if we were having our meeting here. However, we can delay to our next public meeting, which would be October for the meeting of the consultants, or we can call a special meeting 
after our August meeting and before September the 12th when yes. Commissioner De Hovind has to go away. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense to, to me as well. But, but with regard to Tech Week, I mean, I'm, I'm, I understand it's happening that week, but I don't know that that in, it doesn't impact me personally. Maybe it impacts staff. I don't know what our role is in it necessarily on that Thursday. So it, maybe it's more extensive on staff's time than I'm, I'm aware of. Um, I, well, it's just a citywide thing that's going on. I think all the City council is going to be involved. Mayor's office will be involved. City manager's office. But it's a four-day event, and we're talking about an hour or, or two out of the afternoon. Me. So um, let's work on the option A, which is either the end of August or earlier before September 12. Okay. If it's not doable, then we will continue and do it during our regular meeting, which is September uh, third week of September, which not is not really in September. Then it would be in October. In October. October. I mean, uh, I'm going to yeah. see everybody's point. Okay. Well, I think this is going to come down to scheduling because it's okay. kind of hard to herd you guys. <laughs> so. And then eventually oh. we need to talk to the consulting firm to see if they're available. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, it's going to come down to just exactly. coordinating so, the schedule. Exactly. So, yeah, I get it okay. right. Are either both meetings in August? Uh, one the regular one and one special meeting, or one in August and the other one in October. Precisely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'll work on um, calendar-wise. Uh, okay. You know, just trying to get all the calendars aligned and all the planets, so we can take care of everybody's concerns. Sounds good. Okay. okay. And and again, um, you know, I'm pushing ahead because I, I want to get things done, and and but I want to be respectful of of. of the commissioner's thoughts, emotions, feelings, values, and make sure that um, everybody's uh, needs are taken care of. Okay. Uh, to me, it's Thanks, always, sir. sorry, you know, to me, it's always comfortable to see the person and to have an understanding of the person besides what is being said. So that would make me more comfortable having had the chance to talk to her as well. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, thank you. And Thanks. moving to the next thing, um, our pop-up arts um, program. Uh, we have a two-year budget of $50,000 for pop-up arts, and um, we had a study session with the committee members, that's uh, uh, Commissioner Deaver and Oshigan, about pop-up arts. And the first thing, one of the first things that we talked about was the, the term pop-up arts. Uh, we think it's overused, it's trite, and it, it's almost um, uncool at this point. So we'd like to... Uh, I created the name AHA, which stands for Art Happens Anywhere. Um, <laughs> it's um, supposed to surprise you and delight you. Um, it could be corny, cheesy, whatever, but it took me a long time to come up with it. <laughs> so, if y'all have any better um, yeah, suggestions. We haven't come up with anything better, so I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's AHA. Um, and we did look at it once, didn't we, Chuck? Uh, so um, we uh, created a call to artists, which was very thoughtfully crafted around the idea of, of it being about art that's unexpected and unexpected delivery models, unexpected locations, interesting, engaging, technology, technologically sophisticated, all those things that you would expect from something that would make you say, aha. So um, <laughs> that, that call to artists has been crafted. It's been um, somewhat um, approved by our legal department, and it's now in our risk department for the insurance requirements. Um, the insurance requirements, I think, will be complicated in as much as we don't know where the location <laughs> of the, the arts would be. So um, I'm not really sure how insurance people get around that sort of thing. So I think that'll be a, a, a bit of a hurdle. But I'm committed to getting this finalized in the next few weeks. Do you have any idea where this picture was taken? Uh, what city? It's in, a, it's in an underpass. Um, I know, I know. Was, but where? What city? I don't remember because I clipped it from the Internet. But um, I, it was inspired by uh, Commissioner Deaver's suggestion that we do something under the underpass uh, under Western Avenue. I drove down there, and it is a very cool underpass. <laughs> so uh, I just want to bring up a point. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was in Pasadena, and I was going under one of those bridges, freeway bridges, and I noticed that there are some art. So it can be done. Oh, it absolutely can be done, be done and yes. we've already begun to talk. And with trans, uh, Caltrans. Absolutely, uh, yes, with Caltrans. Yes, we um, we've already forged that relationship. Um, there is some history of a relationship between Caltrans and the city of Glendale, maybe you know, extending way back to where the mural that's under um, Harvey was yes. installed. So um, there's paperwork there. So basically what we would need is a permit from Caltrans to use it. I've already met with their people, so um, we've, we've kind of already halfway gotten over that hurdle. Perfect. So. Next thing is um, art in Adams Square Mini Park. Uh, as, as Chuck um, informed you guys earlier, 
the revamp call to artists uh, was due yesterday, not today, and we've received several submissions, and um, Chuck is going to start to schedule up um, with the committee members to select on those. Uh, we're really excited about the submissions that we received. I just kind of peeped over the transom and saw them. Um, I'm hoping that we can select several of them and not just one or two, and perhaps even find other locations within the city for them because they were that exciting. And the next thing um, is a motion. Um, because of this new opportunity that we have to participate in Tech Week and the opportunity that we have as a commission to participate in the Maryland Avenue closure, which I'm calling Maryland Avenue Promenade, um, I'm requesting some allotment of budget from temporary art and public spaces. Um, the Tech Week opportunity, I'm calling Glendale X equals text plus art, another one of my <laughs> names I came up with. Um, what, I, what we'd like to do or what we'd like to recommend is that we take advantage of that um, September the 13th day that the um, Tech Week has available and put together a, a tech, technology art exhibition at the brand. Um, that would be by invitation. So we would not do a call to artists. We would consult with our uh, friends in the art community and invite um, artists to come in and show their technologically related art. And then for Maryland Avenue, um, I'm suggesting that we uh, support that initiative with some performance art, caricature art, and portraiture art. So have perhaps a, um, an, an ongoing uh, group of portrait artists available to do portraits of people like you might see along the river in Paris, and some performance art on Thursday nights. So I've asked for a budget of $3,000 for Tech Week and $5,000 for Maryland Avenue. Uh, the um, committee for that activity would be Chair uh, or Commissioner Derhovanesian and Commissioner Sahakian. So once we had those uh, things finalized, we'd run that through that committee for approval. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Or comments. I have a well, I have both. Um, okay. <laughs> Shocking. Um, so the the my question is: so is it for the Thursday nights for that either thirty to, to ninety days, or is it just during Tech Week? I just wanted to clarify. Those are two separate things. Um, the Tech Week is from September the thirteenth through September the seventeenth. So three thousand dollars would be allocated for one event hopefully at the brand, hopefully on the 13th of September. The plans have not come together for that. That's a, so that's a Tuesday, that's right? A Tuesday. The 13th of Tuesday? Yes. So the other 5K other then 5, is 000. for the closure of Maryland for whatever time period. Cause it, when it was presented earlier, it was either 30 to 90 days, correct? Exactly. So um, my, my <laughs> yeah, thinking, and this is just in my head right now, is that we do a series of, of entertaining things on Thursday evenings. You want to add something? Oh, yes. I just wanted to confirm that it is we are looking for that pilot program to be between 30 and 90 days, giving ourselves some opportunity if, for whatever reason, businesses or pedestrians just um, are not responding favorably to it. But programming is a critical component uh, to the success of the Paseo. So, so my other questions and, I guess, comments about that is I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering what the broader um, plan, which maybe you can help with this, because I, I've seen demonstration projects like Denver has done on their 16th Street Mall. Is that correct? Is that the right terminology? So I know that there are um, there's design elements that that add to um, these types of demo projects, not just the activities. They go hand in hand. So whether it's seating, it's green space, it's um, pedestrian way, you know, what, whatever that might be. So one question I had was what that planning was, and then that tumbles into my comments about is there an opportunity for artist designed elements as part of, of this um, for, for the funding? Because this, this program, too, was actually intended for longer term temporary, um, and it's a, it's a lot of money, and there's, there's some to play with. I don't have a big deal about that, but it was tended for, like, you know, a year-long kind of kinds of thing. So what I'm wondering about is that design element, but then I'm also thinking that rather than um, these more pop-up kind of or, or arts, performance arts, but looking at art immersions, art um, activation, 
and interventions. So thinking about there was a um, program that was done in downtown Los Angeles by kind of a guerrilla group where they they closed down an alleyway and they're floating pedals down and they had some music music playing from some place and people could kind of go in. So that kind of experience um, that really sets itself apart. So it's a that was a really big one comment and giant question. <laughs> if, well, I'd like to address the, the, the latter question, and this is a kind of a small uh, geographical area, and the Arts and Cu Culture Commission's um, contribution to this initiative is just one part of it. So um, I, I'm not saying that we're limited, but I think that um, this whole thing is a pilot just to even see if it's viable to close the street down. So to um, utilize a sort of a non-traditional format I think would be too risky, um, and which is why I've asked for a, a very small amount of money for this and from, from this particular budget. I'd rather conserve the, um, the more interesting, immersive stuff for the, um, the other pop-up arts budget. Um, and then the... Uh, I forgot the first question. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, I led with, and I probably should have stopped there first, but was the, the question about what the broader um, plan is in terms of the urban planning of that space to designate it as pedestrian-friendly place we want people to hang out. And, and I want to go ahead and take that one because I've been working on that <laughs> space for the seven years I've worked for the city of Glendale. And um, there are so many problems with closing Maryland that um, the fact that Jennifer's gotten this far is just phenomenal and that this 2,500 square feet of that street um, has been reserved for this. So um, there's, there's all kinds of civil engineering issues that go along with this, pedestrian is issues, traffic issues, et cetera. So the, um, the long-term vision for Maryland Avenue was contained within the uh, downtown specific plan. And the downtown specific plan never really intended for Maryland to be closed down. But it's something that the business community has asked for over and over again. So, so I will say that the, the long-term urban design plan had, did not include a closure of Maryland Avenue. It only included activation of Maryland Avenue. So um, I do believe that within our public art master plan, we will get some uh, suggestions for activating Maryland on the very wide sub, uh, side, sidewalks there. They're, they're you know, 10-foot sidewalks there. I don't think that, um, that closing Maryland down for art would be... That's, that's not what I'm, I'm... My question is that there are national examples of, of this kinds of temporary... Um, projects and enclosures and, and looking at urban planning. There's great examples through um, its creative placemaking through the NEA. So, so my question is, uh, is the city planning on, you know, this is, these are just sort of trite examples, but temporary seating, a little pocket park, these things that activate and that are proven to, sh to show that there's a, to draw people and to make them want to stay. And then the programming is what keeps them there, whether it's food or it's music or it's some sort of activity. Activation. So on that, uh, again, with the idea in mind that this is a, it's a pilot program, so it's a careful balance of we don't want to spend too much money for something or have it be too permanent when it may not may not be successful, or hopefully it will be wildly successful, and then we can really start talking about. Um, some of the artist design elements within it. But uh, for the time being, what we're planning is uh, pairing up par or partnering up with Downtown Glendale Association using the planters that they have, the large, like, 700-pound planters serving as the barriers um, for to really... Um, to block off the traffic, so we would have about eight of those planters, and then we would have down. We would have seating. We would have tables and chairs um, throughout it, and that's that's really on the um, the design side of it. Uh, really, what we're looking at, and also putting some temporary yard games, uh, some of the bead bag tosses, um, something that that it, it could almost be a passive passive park experience. That's really what we're looking at for now. Uh, I agree with you. There are some wonderful examples across the country and uh, globe on what people have been able to utilize even a similar space with. Uh, so I think as a starting point, we just want to see if folks are naturally drawn to this area, even if you give them somewhere to sit. Uh, because again, that street is beautiful. It's shaded. It, you are naturally invited to sit if there was somewhere to sit. So that's what we want to see at first, and then with the with the traffic, if folks will be able um, to handle that uh, without having um, 
large-scale pandemonium <laughs> when a uh, you know critical pathway is blocked off. So that's just what we're looking at now. Um, are those those two elements or three elements? Um, also, so wanted I, I will, to, I will, also wanted to add that um, want, community services and parks is also working on this. Um, they'll be activating that space over the weekend with family-friendly activities and games and and. Stuff like this, that. I just want to add that this is only the report part. It's not a agenda uh, point. So therefore, if we would like to discuss more into this uh, specific subject, then we need to put it on the agenda and discuss it. Well, we have a motion to give allocate funding. Yeah, but so. the motion is only about the dollar figure. Therefore, we would have limit to our uh, to uh, what we would have is. If we have a full discussion, then I would add, I would need a full uh, members. I mean, Sahakian must be here. Then also, there are many other issues we need to discuss and bring up points. Then my suggestion will be is, if we need to allocate this money today, uh, my, I personally, this is the first time I'm hearing this, so therefore I would, de I would need to do more research and then come up with my own questions to, to deliver them. And this is not enough information for me. Uh, therefore, I would be reserve myself and say, stay away from voting to allocate this money now. But is that the point? Is that what it is? Well, the point is that these are opportunities that just came up quickly and that if we don't move on them, we won't we'll have them. time. Um, and that's why the, uh, the proposal is very conservative um, in terms of the amount of money that we're planning to spend. Um, I think if we talk about this any longer, we're going to lose our opportunity. Um, All right. I mean, if it's a pilot and it's tech week, I think it should be tech related. You know, I don't understand why we would have painting, you know, portraits or like that, kids' that's games. That's a separate initiative. Those are those are two different um, initiatives. One one happens to overlap the other, but they're two separate um, programs. The Tech Week program is yeah, but so but we are we want to be involved in Tech Week, right? I thought I thought this was part of our involvement in Tech Week, or no? It's got nothing to do with the involvement in Tech Week. No, the the Tech Week involvement would be the event at the brand, and it would be focused on technology art. The second but, activity, but nothing is happening at the brand for Tech Tech Week is all downtown, right? That's the, that's my other question. I don't understand. Why we would do something at the brand where everything else, people are walking from lecture to lecture, it's all happening downtown. Why wouldn't we do it downtown? So most of the activities for Tech Week are centered around uh, downtown, uh, along brand in Maryland. Uh, we are also working with Glendale Community College, and they'll be hosting events on Friday afternoon, or excuse me, on Friday morning at GCC. The original intent was to try to spread events throughout the city, uh, but as we are starting to, to book some of these events and working with the employers as well, uh, there just is a natural tendency to want to uh, congregate the activities around downtown. But for Tuesday, um, since we, other than the one event that we do have in the evening, uh, there really is an opportunity to get folks away from downtown and into another part of the city. Uh, and again, that's something that, that ideally we would, we would like to try to promote as well. So I can see on the one hand, yes, many of the activities are centered around downtown, but it could also be an opportunity on the Tuesday to get folks to enjoy another wonderful part of the city as well. So it's really, uh, I think it's a, it's a judgment call on, on what the commission would feel would be more appropriate. But I could see advantages to both. Yeah, I mean, certainly we are all very interested in activating uh, brand, right? We want to bring as many people, as many things going on as possible, the music series and other things. But if, if the focus of this, of this whole event is downtown, I think it's going to be, it's going to be more difficult. It's difficult to bring people to begin with, but to bring them into one space and then ask them then to go someplace else also, I think it's going to be doubly more difficult. Well, again, on if you were to select it on that Tuesday, uh, really that would be that would be a wonderful day to do it because the, the only activity, the only other activity, is with the Glendale Young Professionals in the evening. Um, so it, I don't think it would be um, out of the question to have an event at the brand and get folks to that 
that site and away from downtown since there's really no other activity on in downtown. If we were looking at hosting it on Friday, for example, uh, that's when I, I might uh, gently nudge you to consider having it within downtown because you're absolutely right. To get folks to walk and then suddenly to drive to Brand, that might be difficult. So it's really, uh, it, it depends on the day and just looking at the, the full programming on what we have on Tuesday versus Friday, for example. And, and also the real estate. Um, we happen to have a gallery at the brand, so um, that gives us a, a venue. If we decide to do it elsewhere, then, then we really need to figure out where um, and how we could accomplish it. Um, well, I have two questions. Basically, for the tech event, what do we aim, number one? Basically, what is the main thing that we want to get? Um, and second, the suggestion made uh, that for that 8,000, is it for the entertainment part to make it merriment and happy and kind of jovial, the event to attract people, or is it technologically to be involved with the event? Well, I, my thought in getting the Arts and Culture Commission involved in Tech Week is to help to brand the city as a technology city, as a technology hub, which is the city council's um, uh, intention with Tech Week and always has been. Um, I think art is definitely a place where technology happens. Um, I think the the original intention of Tech Week was that it was to brand the city of Glendale, not downtown Glendale. So it's not downtown Glendale Tech Week, it's Glendale Tech Week. And it to me, it doesn't really matter where we have our event, it's, as long as it's logistically okay with all the other Events. So if we did do it on that Tuesday, the 13th, I think the brand would be at a wonderful location for it to be. It would um, basically um, solidify this uh, brand, uh, brand that library, the city, you mean. at the Brand Library and Arts Center, that the city is a place where technology happens and that we consider art to be a part of that. Uh, well, you know, personally, I can't, sorry, personally, the way I see it, one is a more serious topic of um, technology and art and Glendale, and the other one is engaging people with the technology and art as a kind of more entertaining and attracting their attention from what I sense. Maybe I'm wrong. So the downtown part to me is more for the pedestrians to walk everybody, you know, with their dogs and cats and everything and kids and, uh, you know, having fun and having the technology also kind of, I don't know how it's going to be presented. The other one, it seems that it's a brand, people who are more tech inclined and within the art arena would there to take care of it. So if I'm right, so there are two different things. If it is we want to combine the two, I don't know, then it comes to uh, Commissioner uh, Chagans. Basically, I have another question. Yes, before yeah, that, well, I want to make things a little bit more clear and easier. Uh, if we have divided into a $3,000 budget to Maryland Avenue closure, is that correct? No. The That's the $5,000. 5000 Okay. Yes. Uh, and the other one is the $3,000 for the Tech Week. For the Tech Week event. Okay. Can we divide those two and talk individually? If we have an issue with the $5,000, let's say yes or no, and then the next one. It, I think it makes it a little bit easier instead of combining both at the same time. Sure. Uh, my opinion is the Maryland issue, it's pilot program with a minimum amount of money investment. It might be a good way to start if we can discuss that and then vote on it, and then we'll go next. Does that make sense? That so for, no, first, I need to have that understanding. On the Maryland, which I like the idea very much, but the idea is to get more pedestrians in that area to engage and entertain and have them interested to be part of something in that city, and there would be more of the pedestrian walk and et cetera. Uh, the other one, in my mind, is a more serious idea of technology and art as, a, as Glendale being engaged in that. So if that would be the two different things, then in that case we need to decide the money allocation for one for one purpose and the other one for the other. Well, that's the whole point. Precisely. Yeah. So if, if we are clear on that, right? So, okay. okay. So we just talk about Maryland now, and then we'll okay. talk about... Yeah. Brand. So it's um, still not clear to me Pilot, what are we piloting? I mean, I don't understand. You just want to close off Maryland, but why can't you just 
close okay. it off. I'm not really getting the whole idea. It's like we have we want to have a space, but we have nothing to put in it. So okay, now we have a space. We want to put something in it. I, so so this is in response to. Uh, um, as Sharon mentioned, um, a desire to try to, to activate the street. Uh, and it's a bit of a question of what comes first, chicken or egg. Exactly, we yeah. hear some of the restaurants and the businesses on the street saying, more needs to be done to activate the street. Why aren't there more businesses on the street? Um, so the, the thinking is, well, if we can do on the city side to try to at least infuse it with some programming, uh, that more folks would come to the street and then the restaurants would follow. We're not sure which is the right way or not. That's why we're taking a stab at it and seeing maybe this is the way to do it. Uh, the challenge with it, as Sharon mentioned, is there are a significant number of civil engineering and traffic engineering concerns. So if we do move forward with this, it's been um, we need to make sure that all of the current businesses and the potential um, uh, the, the folks that are driving through understand what's happening. But to your point, uh, if we do close it, uh, which means that we're not going to have thorough traffic going through, the first question is, well, what are we going to put there? Uh, what are we going to do? Chicken or the egg? Yeah. So that's part of what this conversation is today. Um, this commission is one of a few different groups that we're looking at and working with now on the programming element as well. We also, uh, in economic development, feel that it would be difficult to program uh, for 90 days in a row. Um, that's not our intent, but we at the very least would like to provide options. Uh, and it seems that this might be a good option when we take a look at programming. As Sharon mentioned, we're also looking and, and partnering with Parks, and we're also looking at working with Glendale Arts uh, and then partnering with DGA as well. So this is... I think it's nothing to do with Tech Week. Has nothing to do has with Tech Week. With That's right, except okay. for that Tech Week happens to fall That's within the time frame that we're looking at doing the pilot Pure coincidence. Program. Okay. Exactly. That's probably what the okay. confusion was. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So the, the ask regarding the Maryland closure is whether there would be interest on the commission to, to, um, to infuse some temporary programming on this, on this Paseo. Um, and just knowing that it is a pilot and uh, it is very very temporary unless of course it's successful and then we would have further conversations on perhaps um, considering uh, eliminating some of the fountains or medians uh, but that is a very serious conversation that would occur at a later time um, so that's what we're really discussing today and uh, my apologies for getting the two items a bit muddled there and I also want to oh, add I understand. that, that I again, can comment. That having worked at the city for seven years, working in economic development for six, and now in libraries for a year, um, the closure of Maryland is something that's been coming up over and over and over again. Every time we get a new council member, every time a new business is there, um, we investigate how do we close Maryland. And we've talked about closing it from Harvard all the way down to the Alex Theater. We've talked about having festivals there. Number and number of things have, have been discussed about closing Maryland. And each time the conclusion has been, wow, it's really hard. So um, the fact that we've, we've actually identified a piece of real estate where we can have this closure is, is a huge, giant step. So um, I think the, the whole city is looking at how this can work, you know, what we can do, you know, as a municipality to make this work out in response mainly to the businesses that are along Maryland that see it as a beautiful street that needs to be activated. Uh, I need to say something. First of all, about eliminating, because I know most of the business owners on that street, uh, eliminating the water fountain, et cetera, it's completely should be out of question because they are hung to that little area and they were so grateful that the water is running now that I don't think the closing of that would cause a lot of other issues. So that's number one. Number two, um, yes, for that area, it has been a long talk. Many artists have contacted, and even they have uh, contacted our city clerk about why aren't we closing that area for art and for artists to put their artwork and etc. So there are so many things combined, but I'm very happy that finally we are clarifying. One is the making Maryland a live place, and the other one is uh, uh, technology and art. So 
then on that basis, let's decide if we want to allocate any money for the Art and Culture Department to participate uh, financing some of the expenses for the artsy part, music, and etc. And then talk about the, the brand libraries, a serious event of people who are very tech-oriented and artists who want to come and participate in that. So. Based on that, if it's two clear motions, let's let's clarify and let's vote. I just want to clarify one thing. Our funds are specifically to a certain programs, the urban fund, and we recommend that fund to spend a specific program that has been approved. Can we spend or allocate certain amount of money for this kind of program? It's a legal or, I mean, it's a different type of question. It's not... Uh, go ahead. Yeah. The, well, the reason that it took so long to get this question to you was the whole legal aspect of it. You know, whether or not we could allocate um, money from which budget would be appropriate, et cetera, et cetera, um, and then you know which budget could afford it, and um, and then if we do do a program, and this is pretty quick for us, yeah. you know, can we circumvent the call to artists? Um, process and simply make it invitational. So all of those questions have been asked. No, this is for the uh, this is for the Maryland Avenue. Right. We don't need an artist yet at this point. We're just trying to help to close the but, street. Yeah. <laughs> in, a way, in, terms of, in a way, in a way. We put, no, that's the whole question. What do we put? We do talk about that. Right. Yeah. You know, those, those are things that we had to talk to legal about, whether or not we could participate, whether or not we had time to participate. And, and the way, you know, just to, to make a, a long story short, the way that we can participate is that we can ask this commission for an allocation from this particular budget, and we can invite artists to participate in this activity without going through the call to artists thing. Um, the reason that it's it's in the same uh, category. subject category here is because the legal <laughs> answer is the same for both. Yes, we can allocate it out of temporary art and public spaces, and yes, we can do it on an invitational basis. I see. Okay. All right. Any... Let's narrow down our yeah. comments because we've discussed for almost half an hour now. Um, yeah. Okay. So now that I understand, I think I, I'm totally for it. I think we should support that. I, I've always wondered why Maryland doesn't get closed off, and things happen in Maryland so Avenue. It seems like a perfect place that you can close off and bring a lot of people, right? But I really think we should contribute in the way we want to contribute. Contribute in the aha, aha fashion. Like aha should maybe be the umbrella in which we we do programming in that space. That's based the way we want to program. If we want to do tech, we do tech. We don't do something that is not in our master plan, for instance, right? Or it doesn't have to be the master plan uh, signed off, but we should do something interesting. We should do something innovative. We should do something a little bit different than what somebody would, if they walk down any U.S., you know, Main Street USA, see, it, I see something different in Glendale. I would say I think that should be our whole attitude and approach towards it, and I'm totally for supporting that. Uh, well, I think under the budget, either it could go under the, the pop-up or it could be art in public places. So either way, we can kind of direct it, but now the content, that would be another issue. If we do have enough time to sit and plan and to invite people who could provide that, that would be a situation that needs to be discussed. Okay, um, go ahead, and I want to make... So, from my standpoint, I, I, I think it's great. I mean, I think it's terrific that, that there's some actuality happening around the closure. I wish it was a little bit further, starting a little later, because the things that we're talking about would lend themselves better. Um, but, so I have no problem with allocating money to this. I, and I don't even really care which, I mean, it comes out of the one that we have the largest amount, it's fine, it makes sense. My is, is very close to um, Commissioner Oshagan is that it, it's all about what it is. I don't want it to be for what you would see on any main street. I would want. I would agree that it either should be something technological. I think immersion. I think it's a great opportunity to draw people in in these ways that people are transform a, a transformational. I think it's the word. I would probably utilize this first because if, if you want to make the goals of actually bringing people there, which hopefully the restaurants and such are doing, it, the, the question is how do you keep them there? And so the games are fun. All of that is it's great. That, that's all. I, I, even maybe it's an artist-made game in some way or involves the arts. 
or and I think doing some sort of temporary seating or something that's designed by an artist that can then be utilized someplace else if this doesn't stay closed and we can make it maybe at City Hall and out here we've got the artist thing is out here and they can come and do something. So I think it needs to be immersive and I think it needs to be more thoughtful in terms of artist participation and design in terms of urban design and how you incorporate those. Otherwise, I absolutely will not support putting money towards it. I think we consumed all our opinions with the regarding <laughs> this, this uh, Maryland Avenue. Um, are we ready to vote? I mean, well, I'd just like to add one thing um, to um, Commissioner Deaver's um, comment. Um, basically, what we're asking for now is an allocation of funding. If we are unable to put together a successful or, or interesting, engaging, immersing program, whatever, within that amount of money, I think we just wouldn't do it. Um, so what we're asking for is the permission really just to get started. Yes. Um, I, you know, I mean, it's a short amount of time that we have to plan, and we're not exactly sure how much time that is for the Maryland Avenue closure because all that hasn't been finalized. But I just want to get ahead of that and see if this commission would support an allocation of $5,000, which I, I think is, is the, the minimum that we would need. Um, if As this program develops, if we have to come back to this commission and ask for more money, bow out, or present something else, fine. But I, I just think we need to get started, and I, and I, I felt you know, my professional opinion was five thousand dollars is a good place to start. Okay. Um, so let's vote. vote. Is it easy? I mean, are we ready? I just, I think. Okay, we are. Actually, one one more <laughs> question. So when will this come? So let us let's say we voted and said great, lose lose the money. So in terms of the timing of of how it would come, it would come back and understanding kind of where you all are going with it all, what the broader context of it is, because I think that has a lot to do with what we can do if it happens in August or if it can, continues on through October and there's something new, a new element. I just, I just want this to be successful. It's really why I'm so passionate about it, and I just think having, even if it's more money or if it's the, t the right type of thing, and I just don't want it just throwing money at something that's going to go poof. <laughs> Well, you, you do have a committee um, for this, which are um, Commissioner De Hovenesian and Commissioner Sahakian. So they will be your eyes and ears to make sure that your feelings and thoughts are represented. Um, and uh, is, and Jennifer, you have a very aggressive <laughs> professional here that's going to um, take care of all the technical aspects of making this space ready. So um, I, I don't think anybody who's involved in this knows exactly what's going to happen, when, how, et cetera, but it's just it's coming together now. And with all these different partnerships, Jennifer is able to move forward. So if everybody says, well, maybe, then we can't get anywhere. So we kind of have to jump in this uh, boat or not. Uh, to the specific question as far as time frame, we are looking at doing this as quickly as August 15th or mid-August. Um, wow. If, if all goes well, uh, part of this is that we also don't. Three weeks. That's tomorrow. We, al <laughs> we also don't want it to go too far into the holiday season, um, if that would have some sort of impact on traffic. Uh, but this is also something that we're we're getting um, um, direction that we need to to work on this quickly. And, and there's been many logistic uh, parts to it. So that that's our, our that's our target date. But like you, I'm very passionate and uh, committed to this project and want it to succeed as well. So I appreciate uh, your similar passion <laughs> for it. Okay, let's vote. Are we ready? What's the motion? The motion. The motion is to approve a new allocation of $5,000 from temporary art and public spaces for cultural programming for Maryland Street closure. All right. Commissioners Derhovenessian? Yes. Oh. Well, we have to put it. Oh, and then second commission. Who made the motion? I didn't hear who made the motion. We, that's the motion that's uh, being proposed, but someone needs to make it. Yeah. Okay. I make the motion. Okay. And then now we need a second. Second. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. Now we can vote. Commissioners Derhovenessian. Yes. Beaver. Yes. Oshigan. Yes. Commissioner Sahakian is absent. Chairperson Sharikian. Yes. Okay, now we can talk about the allocating the $3,000 to Tech Week uh, in Brand Library. 
Any comments and questions? And before you um, begin your discussion or deliberation on that, just wanted to emphasize that that also is conceptual. The Brand Library and Arts Center uh, staff is really overwhelmed with projects. Um, this would have to be an invitational. Uh, we, we definitely would have to reach out to our community and, and find those exciting technology art projects that already exist. Um, perhaps invite those artists to come and show their art on video at the Brand Library and Arts Center was the, uh, the to me, the, the only venue where we could really pull this together in this amount of time. Um, if what we, date are we looking at? September the 13th. Only one day? Yes. Can we move that it's, date? It's, this is... Sorry, it, it's a, like a, like an hour long, two hour long presentation of work, right? Or or are you? Or something My thought was else? that we'd have several artists presenting their work, and that it could be an all day thing, maybe from an ten all to day four. thing. Um, so it, we, we can't call it a panel because uh, we are not um, allowed to host panels within our uh, guidelines. But we can really? host an exhi an exhibition. Yes, um, a, a panel or a talk is is not permit it within our guidelines. It's something that I had a long conversation with our legal department about. So basically, um, it would be sort of like a panel in many ways. It's just it's artists it's would a be semantics there issue, right? to show what their art was and talk about how it came together. So I see it as an educational ex exhibition where these, uh, these artists have, have done these wonderful technological projects and they can show them on video and engage our and engage in an artist interested audience in how they came together. And if we do approve something like this, it will go on the agenda of Tech Week first day as a pro part of that program too. Is that correct? That is correct. So uh, any participation that you have, we would promote you on the on the website, uh, and we would include you as a partner as well. And there there would also be benefits. Um, as part of your participation as well. So you would mentioned before about VIP for commissioners. Uh, there would be other benefits that we would extend to brand library and staff as well as commissioners so that you are not just participating in that one, e one event on that one day, but you're invited to participate we'll throughout the week uh, at every single event. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, but the only people who pay for Tech Week will be allowed to see this thing, or how does that work? No, uh, the, if it's part of Tech Week. I'm sorry, because yeah. because of our charter, because of our guidelines, we cannot charge for the things that we exactly. do. So the if we host this at well, we can't charge. Period. Um, we host we would host it at the Brown Library and Arts Center, and it'd be open to the public, and it would be free. So we would be part of Tech Week, but we'd be that part of Tech Week that's free. Yes. That's right. <laughs> the best of both worlds. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but are you going to be in town at that date? Uh, yeah. My Can we move it to October? <laughs> We can't move Tech Week. Tech Week, Tech Week. <laughs> we can, I mean, if we just we could decide not to we participate to in Friday, Tech Week from Tuesday to Friday, could, maybe, but that's about it. You know, for example, we can maybe utilize in August, kind of. It, it, but it Tech has, Week that's too soon. We'll miss the <laughs> we'll miss the point. It's, it has to be part of the Tech Week. Tech Week <laughs> is from September thirteenth. September thirteenth. So we would lose the benefit and I know where of the you're coming from. You're not in town. <laughs> no, mine is not as much, truly, because, um, well, I love art and I love all forms of it, but I really wanted Commissioner Oshagan to be there. They are all uh, tech-oriented and et cetera. My plans aren't finalized him, either, so may, I may... That's why. Not for maybe, my Maybe, maybe. But, I mean, you know, alternatively, um, if, if we decided not to participate in Tech Week, we could utilize Tech Week um, to uh, promote the Arts and Culture Commission activity in another way. We could use the uh, Tech Week to invite people to a technology art exhibition at a different time. But um, my thought is that why not take advantage of all this great um, advertising, branding, publicity, and really participate with our partners in the city uh, the other departments in the city that are, are getting involved in this and really putting ourselves on the map. I really felt that if we were to do it on the 13th at the Brown Library and Arts Center, it's a beautiful venue. It's so it's a place where people like to go. We got lots of parking up there. Um, it's the a recital place, hall. I'm sorry, the, the recital hall. In the hall. recital hall, all day. All or, day, or video. Day. Um, I think that it, we'd have a tremendous turnout. Uh, I think it would be a lovely event, and I think that the fact that it's not downtown might even be cooler. Um, of course, you know, I think people will be coming in town to Glendale for Tech Week. If we're the first event, um, I think we, we have an opportunity to welcome them 
and show um, technology art is really cool. And um, I think we have a, a one-time opportunity to uh, impress upon the community um, just how um, avant-garde this commission is. Uh, could I request and suggest something? Uh, forget about the fact that I'm in town or not. A selfish and unselfish <laughs> request would be, uh, could we have GTV6, especially for the one at the brand, uh, videotape it? So not only for those of us who are not there, even the community, not everybody come, goes to events, but people do watch. Uh, GTV6, and some people who do not have even cable, they watch it. I know a lot of friends from different even states, they are watching through their web uh, what you know is being presented. So if we want to be on the page with the whole community at large, uh, to have it nicely taped so it would be there for everybody. Uh, yeah, I just want to add one positive or at least another point. Uh, considering that it's the first day of Tech Week, uh, it will be a, a good kickoff uh, for the whole week. Uh, maybe all the other artists will come there and the presenters, the companies, the firms, all people. And that will be a nice get together, maybe a social hours too. We have the space outside. I mean, that's something to think about and turn it into an event instead of just a art presentation. That will be something to think about. Excellent idea. Well, just hand it, <laughs> hand it to them. What are the hours? Uh, it was, is there already an e I can't recall. Was there an evening thing already scheduled for that? or is it just There is an evening thing scheduled. It's through the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, and uh, it's Glendale Young Professionals. Uh, but it's OK if there's overlap. Uh, and that's one of the, the beautiful things about Tech Week in general, is that there are going to be some events that appeal to some folks and other events that appeal to other other groups. So it's OK if, if you end up having a reception uh, that would be a wonderful fit as well. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, my comment, <laughs> I'm going to do it. So I would say more probably in the evening would probably make more sense if we're going to schedule something because it is the first day, and as we all know, in the conference of any sort, it's most people come in the, in the middle part of, a, of any kind of long-term event. So it's going to be difficult, I think, to bring people, and on a Tuesday especially, so I would, I, would my, my, I would suggest we do it afternoon, evening, so it stretches. Um, plus, so I wanted to, the 3,000 would be for honoraria, for, for setup. Uh, what, what would the funds be used for? Honoraria. Um, my thought, and this is, again, just thoughts, is that we'd invite about five to seven artists to come in and show their artwork. Um, perhaps in a half hour, hour, staggered presentations. Perhaps at the end there would be a um, um, discussion, not necessarily a panel, <laughs> about um, <laughs> no what they, they've all done. No um, and uh, so that that would eat up about 2000 to 2500 and that there might be enough money to engage our uh, Open Studios tour consultant to pull all this together for us. So. Um, that's my thought, is that we would um, ask 1111 and Creative Collective to pull, to find, curate this for us, to do the invitational and conduct the event, and that the $3,000 would cover the honoraria for all the people involved. Okay. One quick question. Um, have you, are you guys looking at incorporating at all the theme of the makerspace? I don't know where that's been going in terms of, but it seems like it might be an interesting opportunity. Right. The, <clears throat> the Glendale Library Foundation um, does plan to fund, the, raise funds for the makerspace. That's another project I work on in my other life. Um, and they are also looking for a way to participate in Tech Week and to incorporate the makerspace. At that time, the makerspace will be a hard hat area. So there may not be an opportunity to show anybody the makerspace, but we can certainly expose the public to what we're planning to put in there. So um, our uh, board chair, Joylene, Joylene Wagner, is working on um, some initiative for the makerspace within Tech Week. And is the makerspace going in any direction technological, or are we looking more at crafts for that space? 
Um, well, the last meeting that we, we had, I presented on the makerspace, it's both. Um, so there would be technology there, everything from 3D printing to animation graphics, but also crafts, sewing machines, textiles, laser cutters for, for sewing, um, small jewelry craft, etc. It's a small space, so all those things would have to be layered in, right. but, um, yeah. but I, both I, is the answer. Cool. And I was just thinking in terms of you're calling it an exhibition and we're bringing in artists and giving them stipends to be able to, to wrap that in thematically in terms of, you know, what is a makerspace? What are the types of programming? Some examples of maybe student works, things like that, that in progress of, of the making of and not just the presentation of the, you know, what they've done. Anyway, it's just a thought to throw out there. Yeah, the makerspace, you know, of course, it's a project I'm very passionate about because I'm, I'm in charge of it. But <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's a little early for, for us to be working on it. We're still finalizing the elements. We're still finalizing the budget for the, uh, the program elements of it. So it is a little early. But we do want to take this, um, this opportunity with Tech Week to involve the community in, in, first of all, understanding that we're going to have a makerspace, finding out what they want in that makerspace and at what levels. We, we sort of know what the, the roster of, 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 um, of equipment and technology we want to have in the makerspace. The question is now what level? So we know we want to have sewing machines. Do we want to have industrial or do we want to have, you know, regular commercial? Uh, we know we want 3D printing, but do we want, you know, the, the full enchilada or just a basic unit? So um, um, that's where we are with the, the program in the makerspace. And just to elaborate on the, the panel that we're looking at folding in the makerspace discussion, so we're looking at... Um, on Friday afternoon, we would have a topic called Space Matters, How Design Fuels Innovation and Community. And we would have folks from WeWork, which is a co-working space, a uh, representative from, uh, who's working on the Space 134 project, and then uh, possibly the architect um, to talk about makerspace and other design and uh, even, even fiber elements on that. So I think that's a perfect way to plug in what we're doing uh, on that side. So are we talking about Maryland again? No, no, no. 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 Okay. This is a separate panel during Tech Week. Something different. <laughs> but something tangent. different. Okay. <laughs> would you please read the motion again? Okay. The motion. We can, uh, the second motion would be. Sorry. Motion to approve a new allocation of. $3,000 from temporary art and public spaces for Tech Week art events and cultural programming. Okay. Clear. Second. Any, I, any, make second. I make a motion. You make the motion. I'm not second. Okay. <laughs> Chuck is. Uh, okay. And. Uh, and. Roll call. Commissioners Der Yes. Beaver. Yes. Oshigan. Yes. Commissioners Hockian is absent. Chairperson Shurikian. Yes. Okay, and I know. Let's finish now. We have one more item on. The yeah, we do have a. Well, first of citation. all, first of all, I need to finish up this report. Yes. Um, the final status item I wanted to talk to you about was um, acquisition of permanent public art and murals on city property. Those are things that are also within your work plan. Those are items that we believe are too large for us to, to embark on without a public art master plan. So those are, are items that the public art master plan would help us out with. And for more information about the Arts and Culture Commission projects, um, I'm inviting the public to either call me or email me and uh, engage in the discussion. Okay. Um, so, my next report. At item 5A2, Commissioner appointment to a public art selection committee for the Hollywood, Hollywood Burbank Airport. Okay. To do what? Yeah, well, that's. I'll give you the report. Wait, wait. Um, first of all, staff recommends that the Arts and Culture Commission chair appoint one commissioner to serve as juror for the selection committee of an artist to create public art to be affixed to panels on the regional intermodal transit center at the Hollywood Burbank Airport. Um, the RITC is a very large canvas for public art. Uh, they've been discussing it for, for quite a long time. The um, Hollywood Burbank um, Airport Authority has authorized monies to have public art installed there, and they've asked the partner cities of Burbank, Pasadena, and Glendale to get involved in this art project. They've requested that one commissioner from here uh, 
sit on the curation committee. They've narrowed it down to a list of, I think, 12 artists or so to select from, and um, they'd like one of our commissioners to get involved. Um, the time commitment would be that the panel will meet twice, first to select the artist to be commissioned from a list of pre-qualified artists, and a second time to review the artwork design proposal. Um, the, airport, the airport authority has asked that the Glendale commissioner be identified by July 29th. So this is something. This is something within <clears throat> two months. It will be done. The as a, as a appointee member. Yes. Within two months. Yes. Okay. And what is the timeline? The timeline for the installation of the art. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, no. They've just asked us for to appoint a commissioner okay. and then to start co coordinating with that person well, because there would be so many people from so many different entities involved. I'm sure they would develop the timeline after everybody got to the table. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask very clearly. Commissioner Deaver, will you be available in the next two months to go another meeting? Depending on when the meeting is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. We, all the the we all have the we same thing. We all have the same thing. We have no idea when uh, the meeting is up. So we said July 29th. Uh, we have to July reply. 29th, they would like for us to suggest which commissioner would be working on this. Will the commission allow me to personal talk in each commissioner and then reply to you? No. Well, sure. Um, they've, they've asked us to have our selection by July the 29th. So... Um, I'm presenting to you that, that that's what they've asked for us and to I do. Can I do the appointment in the next week? Yes. Today is only 21st. Today is the 21st, so you'd have until the 29th to, to select someone. Um, if you chose not to select someone, then you, know, you might not be represented in the selection process, or it might have to be staff. Perhaps you can have that discussion now as to availability, and then we can um, follow up with that and maybe select a... A, a primary and an alternate, alternate. so that um, if that if one isn't available, uh, then the second could be. Well, considering we only four people here today and uh, Shant is absent, um, it depends on the days, the meeting, and hour, and you. You're out of town. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to be out of the country for probably three weeks, like probably end of September through October, so that. Okay, that's that's that considered that, perfect. and you. Mine meet September till end of September, but so we are in I'm July. Available. So the meetings will start somewhere in August, probably continue till September. I, I mean, I, I have some flexibility, and I'd be happy to be one of, of the two. Of the um, as of now, if, if the commission is okay, um, I'll nominate or appoint Commissioner Deaver, and as an alternate, we can work with me. So if it's okay with you guys. Comfortable. Okay. Good. It's okay with you. All right, then. That's how it's going to go. I think it's going to be a really exciting project. Um, it's a very visible uh, place, and I think you'll really enjoy participating in this election. If you attend meetings and you're not going to make it next time, I'll go, and then your report will talk. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Next item. At item number six, commission staff comments. Any comments? Any I, I do have one staff comment. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank this commission for all your thoughtful um, consideration of all the things that we're doing. You know, we're working really hard to, to bring your, um, your vision into fruition, and we really appreciate the level of engagement and the level of trust that, that you've given us in getting all this done. Um, we're a small staff, but we're energetic, and I uh, just wanted to... Uh, express on behalf of Chuck and Yvonne and everybody in the office that we really, really appreciate your enthusiasm and your eagerness and openness to work with us. Sounds great. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? All right. And uh, next item. At item number seven, written communications. Any? Done. And next item. This item will be adjournment. Adjourned meeting. Thank you.